With the Rockwell B-1 Lancer program out of the picture thanks to budget cuts, aircraft manufacturers began scrambling for ways to become the United States' premier missile platform. Facing bankruptcy, Boeing attempted to do what nobody else had done. Modify their aircraft to fit as many as 72 air-launched cruise missiles, more than three B-52 bombers combined. The effort would transform the commercial airliner into a lethal force capable of wiping out enemy targets from hundreds of miles away. The ambitious plan was good enough, but things didn't go as expected. Seven forty seven. The Boeing 747 was initially designed as part of a failed Air Force cargo aircraft contract, but it found its true purpose as the first jumbo commercial airliner. Boeing developed the aircraft in under 16 months with no less than 50,000 employees, and the 747 first took to the skies in 1969. The aircraft spent over 16,500 hours in wind tunnel and flight tests to perfect its design, eventually fulfilling the company's expectations. Still, Boeing struggled to finance its development. After borrowing over $2 billion, almost $15 billion in today's market, the company would face severe repercussions if the aircraft failed to comply. Boeing was on the brink of bankruptcy, and its top executives began looking for ways to use the 747. On June 30, 1977, President Jimmy Carter announced that he was shutting down the development of the B-1 bomber program, citing cost overruns, advanced air-launched cruise missiles, and the possibility of developing a stealth bomber as the main reasons behind the decision. During this time, the United States was in need of a heavy payload aircraft with enough power to cross entire oceans and engage with enemy targets. The easiest, fastest, and most cost-effective option then became to convert an existing commercial platform that could carry the recently developed AGM-86 air-launched cruise missiles. Knowing that the U.S. Air Force was interested in an aircraft with a range of 6,000 miles and enough room to carry about 77,000 pounds of ordnance, Boeing put forward a proposal for a low-risk, cheap cruise missile delivery vehicle based on the 747 in 1980. If the plan worked, the company could now sell its expensive new design for both commercial and military purposes. Cruise Missile Carrier Aircraft After being approved, Boeing immediately began to work on the Cruise Missile Carrier Aircraft, or CMCA. Unlike other bombers of the era, the CMCA variation could blend with other commercial air traffic, one-upping the Boeing 747's already robust international commercial logistics network, bringing an additional secondary cargo-carrying capability and leveraging the overall project. Starting with the 747-200C variant, the aircraft was fitted with a nose cargo door that could be opened in order to remove 200 seats and leave an empty interior that could house large payloads, particularly the newly developed AGM-86 air-launched cruise missile. The AGM-86 was explicitly designed to increase the survivability of the Air Force's most used bomber, the B-52, engaging targets from ranges that could exceed 1,500 miles, well outside the reach of Soviet surface-to-air missiles. However, by the time the project planning started, the B-52 was getting old. And while the World War II-era aircraft could only carry 20 of these air-launched cruise missiles, the Boeing CMCA project could carry up to 72. The novelty weapons would be carried inside the 747's fuselage on nine rotary launchers, each loaded with eight missiles and capable of wiping out targets from hundreds of miles away. The subsonic air-launched cruise missiles would be fired one at a time through a bay door on the right side of the CMCA's tail cone, with each rotary launcher sliding back into firing position as needed. Although the missiles would be ejected one by one, Boeing's CMCA design was meant to launch them quickly one after the other. To ensure the missile bay configurations were as effective as they could be, the engineering team at Boeing tested approximately 30 combinations related to missile bay shapes and launch techniques. The AGM-86 missiles would then make contact with a satellite data link to receive target information while airborne, or the target data could be relayed from a command and control team stationed behind the aircraft's cockpit, otherwise used as the first class area in the commercial version of the plane. Due to its unique configuration, the 747 CMCA would have been more potent than three B-52s combined. But impressive as that may be, it was the expected cost savings that made the missile-packing 747 a very viable option. Even then Secretary of Defense Harold Brown liked the aircraft and testified in January of 1979 that, quote, I consider the cruise missile carrier aircraft to offer a prudent option for rapid growth in our strategic capability should it be needed. 
On this basis, the Air Force is completing concept and system definition studies based on the consideration of both military and civilian aircraft. These aircraft include existing wide-body transport aircraft, as well as the B-1 design, Advanced Medium STOL Transports, or AMST, C-141, C-5A, and other candidates. Upon completion of these studies in July of this year, two aircraft will be selected for follow-on advanced design and development and flight demonstration. He added that the feasibility of the projects would be thoroughly evaluated no later than the spring of 1981, allowing a full-scale engineering development decision by July. Following Brown's statement, and knowing the potential their 747 design had, the Boeing team believed they had a real chance, especially as they saw that the E-4 Nightwatch airborne command posts were already being purchased, and they were based on the same airframe. What could have been? Despite having such a promising future, the Reagan administration decided to pass on the project and revive the B-1's development instead, as well as semi-clandestinely procuring the B-2 under what would later become the Advanced Tactical Bomber Program, a next-generation air superiority fighter made to counter emerging worldwide threats. The aging B-52s also received upgrades. Although the iconic bomber was already considered over the hill in the aviation industry, the model remained America's primary air launch missile delivery platform for three more decades. And despite the success of both programs, we can only imagine the CMCA's revolutionary performance in modern wars should it have been developed. In fact, if such an aircraft had eventually been upgraded to carry smaller GPS-guided munitions, it would have been a great addition to the U.S. Air Force in the 21st century. If the CMCA had been put into service and converted to carry joint direct attack munitions of varying sizes along with small diameter bombs, it would have been able to increase the 72 missiles it could carry to hundreds, all at a fraction of the cost of the Air Force's current bomber options. It's widely believed that the CMCA's 72 cruise missiles would have come in handy over the 20 past years of conflict with Afghanistan and the War on Terror. With its low operating cost, massive payload, and tremendous and reliable endurance, the 747 CMCA could have been an air support powerhouse in the uncontested airspace over Afghanistan, as well as in other conflict-ridden areas over the Middle East, like Iraq and Syria. In addition, the 747 CMCA performing in a maritime strike role could have wreaked severe havoc on enemy flotillas, operating over thousands of miles out in the sea. Using an external targeting source and satellites, the modified 747 could ripple close to 100 network-enabled long-range anti-ship cruise missiles at the enemy, providing so many targets that the enemy's naval air defenses would be overwhelmed. Potential Resurgence Today, the United States military and its allies face a different adversary in China and its growing military and economic power. The Asian nation continues to manufacture more and more ships, missiles, and other weapons at unprecedented rates not seen in the West since the era of the Cold War. Furthermore, the United States Navy and Air Force face a critical weakness, as a large percentage of their once most capable missile-launching strike platforms are about to end their runs. During the fall of 2021, the U.S. Air Force completed the retirement of their B-1B bombers, while the Navy is close to retiring many of their guided missile cruisers, Burke-class guided missile destroyers, and Ohio-class nuclear-powered guided missile submarines. Although the loss of these capable platforms is being somewhat mitigated by the construction of several other vessels, it is nonetheless numerically worrisome, as it will leave the Navy relatively unprotected, at least in the near term. At a time when defense budgets are tightening and the American military is losing sea and air base strike assets in bulk, a concept from the past is once again offering a unique and cost-effective opportunity to compensate for these losses. And although the 747-200 is now completely retired, the two-engine long fuselage 777-300ER is the leading candidate for a robust and cost-effective modernized cruise missile carrier aircraft for low-threat standoff range missile launching. The new CMCA represents a promising opportunity to cost-effectively bolster or enhance the U.S.'s long-range strike capabilities, well before aircraft manufacturers can respond with new platforms of shipyard-repaired aircraft. If a new CMCA were developed, the B-52 would look even less attractive, as this aircraft could carry even more missiles, with a more extensive range and for much less money per mile. Perhaps the time for the cruise missile carrier aircraft is finally coming. Thank you for watching our Dark Skies video. Please give us a like and share your thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our exciting historical videos.